Hey everybody, you are Supreme Toys here. I did not think I would be doing another DC Multiverse review and unboxing anytime soon, but then Walmart's Collector Con happened, and they had a 50% off most of their in-stock DC Multiverse figures. So all these guys except for Wonder Woman and Batman were 50% off, if not more in some cases. Um, these guys were still on sale, but I had to pay a little bit higher price. I think they were about 16 a piece. I'd been sleeping on this Dark Father Build-A-Figure Wave for a long time, mostly because I do not really care for the Robin King figure. But the Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, I really dig those designs, and I'm really down to, <laughs> to build and look at that Dark Father figure. Let's see, I believe the Azrael Batman and the Mecha Superman were $10 a piece. Duke Thomas was only 8 bucks, and that design with a, <laughs> a metal guitar battle axe, I couldn't beat that. Um, the Robin King was $6, and Superman was 8 and as mentioned before, Wonder Woman and Batman were both about 16 So we're going to do a really quick unboxing of all of these guys so first we're gonna take a look at this death metal Batman I am not familiar with the death metal comics I've done a little research but other than that I guess you could just say it's a multiversal Batman arc where Batman's from all kinds of universes come together um, and it's a death metal theme <laughs> he's got his heavy metal scythe guitar with a mouth and these designs in the comics were right up McFarlane's alley, especially with these leathery trench coat and buckles everywhere. And of course, he comes with Dark Father's legs. Next, we got a cool partner figure to go with him. Anytime I can get a bunch of figures with, you know, guitars or musical equipment and they look badass, like this Duke Thomas here. I love that helmet. I love the armor. I love the... I just love everything about this figure right out of the gate. So I can't wait to get him open. I mean, look how imposing that is. It's like a video game character. This is uh, very reminiscent of some of the Batman toys we got in the late 90s. I believe it was the Batman Legends collection. They had some really great designs in that, that toy line. And of course, I really slept on this Wonder Woman... I love this design. I love her costume. I love the hair. I love that face sculpt. I love everything except I don't really care about the chainsaw sword. <laughs> I wanted this figure for quite a while now and I was super excited to see it go so cheap on walmart.com. And she comes with Dark Father's head and cape. This is the gold label Azrael Batman armor figure. The original was black and this is silver. I like figures like this, this metallic silver on this mecha style. So if they would have redid this again in gold, I would be all over it a third time. My least favorite and least interested figure is this Robin King. Of course, like I said, I haven't read the death metal comics, but I just don't like, I just don't like him. I don't like that face. I don't like the whole concept. But that's just me. Some people probably loved it. Uh, I'm going to say the Dark Father body was worth $6 alone. Next we got this emo punk Creed looking Superman, which I really like. I'm not exactly sure the whole concept with the arm. Maybe he's infected with the Doomsday virus or something. Lastly, we have the little Mecha Superman here. All right, he's got this cool collector card. As I mentioned, I love the collector cards. Rocking it out. Got his little bio on the back here. Let's see what it says. Real name Bruce Wayne. Following the universe-shattering events of Dark Knight's Metal, the Earth is enveloped by the Dark Multiverse and has transformed into a hellish landscape twisted beyond recognition. Willing to sacrifice his own humanity for the greater good, Batman wields an evil Black Lantern power ring, 
which grants him the power to resurrect the dead. Now leading an army of zombies and riding a bat cycle made of bones, the Dark Knight wages war against the Batman who laughs and his omnipotent goddess Perpetua in his mission to save the DC multiverse. All right. That sounds pretty awesome. I think I'm going to have to find this comic series and catch up on it. I hate that I've waited so long to do it, but I tend to always be out of the loop. That sounds really cool. Of course, he's got this awesome little scythe electric guitar. That's just pretty cool. Anything that's like an instrument and doubles as a weapon is pretty cool. And look at these gnarly designs on the on the head. Like, what is that? Like some kind of like fleshy stuff around the neck of the guitar. It's almost like it's actually a living creature. I don't know. I like it. It's a bit minimalistic as far as paint apps are concerned. It's just got a little yellow and black on it. And a little bit of orange. But it still looks cool from a distance. He had this second hand just floating around in the box. It wasn't in part of the bubble. I'm wondering if that was just an extra hand that accidentally fell in because it looks exactly the same as the other one. So I think this isn't supposed to be in there. It just somehow wound up in the box. And of course he has the left and right legs of Dark Father, which just look like really big chunky Batman legs. He comes with his standard DC multiverse stand which is useful for these figures. And let's take a look at Batsy here himself. Ugh, that's a really tight head. I think it's on a double neck joint. So he's got some really good up and down and side to side movement. Um, the paint around the cowl is decent, though a little bit of the flesh kind of bleeds over in some spots. And he has, he's got like a four o'clock shadow going on. But that's more of like the sculpt, I think, which it just looks pretty good. The textures on this figure are fantastic. If you move the cape side. Oh, okay. It, it looks like the cape is actually glued into place, which is weird. And that one just like popped off. I don't know why they would have done that because it just kind of floats well enough on its own. Why would I glue it into place? I don't get that. The textures on this jacket are phenomenal. This is when I say this is right up McFarlane's alley. They really can excel with these types of designs, and their sculpting team is amazing. They really get it. And this is a really soft, rubbery plastic, so it's going to move and flow. Usually, a lot of companies will skip the inside textures on stuff like this, but they really textured it out on the inside and out. So it looks amazing. I love like the everything about this figure. Look at the look at the detail on the arms and the bands and the wrist gauntlets and the hands. I'm digging these skull chain belt. <laughs> the utility belt. Like all the textures are fantastic. And they continue on to the back. Man. There is one thing you could tell, um, they cut paint apps on the back of the legs where these straps continue around. They're painted on the front. Um, but I don't know if that's a cost-cutting measure or they intended to leave them blank. But, yeah, they, they painted the back and the sides just straight gray. Man, look at the boots. Everything. Everything on this figure is gorgeous. Can't believe I skipped on this figure for so long. Well, let's check on the articulation. As I mentioned, the head moves very well. He's got this double ab crunch at the waist and chest, which give him some decent movement. The trench coat's not going to hinder it, but you're not really going to see it because of the trench coat. That being said, you can have him hunch over and his head goes up pretty good. Like, they put a lot of love into this figure. Whoever was sculpting it was like, yeah, this is better than just a standard Batman. Of course, he's got the butterfly joints on the inside of the arms. So there's a little bit of movement back to back, as well as the swivel and hinge at the elbow, double jointed elbows, and the hands are on that weird 
split ball joint, which I never really liked. And of course, this all mirrors to the other side, and there are no stuck joints. Everything is nice and tight, not too loose. Check out the thighs. These clever, these clever hip joints are amazing. They hide so much of the joint that it's just amazing that we've come this far with articulation. Oh man, it looks good. He's got an upper thigh cut, which blends well with the straps. Uh, double jointed knees, bit tight on the double jointed knees, but not too tight. He can get about a 90 degree with the double joint, so that was obviously necessary. Um, that actually hurt my finger, the spike right now on his boot. And of course, he's got his ball joint on a rocker ankle and a toe cut. And of course, this all mirrors to the other side. It moves amazingly. As per usual, this crotch piece is a softer rubber, so it doesn't really affect the hip rotation. I love these knee pads. And of course, yeah, wow, this guy literally rocks. Now, one thing I would say, I wish he would have come with like a guitar strap. I don't know if that was ever the intention. Um, let's see how he holds his guitar. Holds it pretty good, although I don't know how you're going to play it without cutting your arm off. That scythe. Let's see, can he even reach the strings? Let's see. That's not very accessible. I'm trying to do it. The neck on this is very soft, so you want to break this thing. You good. Batman cannot play his guitar. Jeez, it won't stand his hand. All right, I don't know what to do. He, he he can hold it to a point, but then, like, there he goes. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I love this figure. This is a great looking shelf piece. Next, we're gonna look at Robin King. Got Robin King out. He also comes with his little trading card. So let's see what this says about him. Real name Bruce Wayne. All right, so this is... <laughs> I didn't know that this was a young Bruce Wayne. So let's just read this. <laughs> okay, this is new to me. Real name Bruce Wayne. Out of the most sinister corner of the dark multiverse comes Robin King, a young version of Bruce Wayne who's chosen an unexpected, horrific path to follow. Rather than becoming Batman, this troubled Bruce embraced his inner darkness at a very young age, donning his own Robin costume and devoting his life to evil. His utility belt is filled to the brim with weapons designed to defeat every hero in the DC multiverse, making Robin King the most sadistic soldier in the Batman Who Laughs evil army. Alright, uh, that's a surprise to me. It's kind of cool that I didn't read the book, so this is like a first. This is Bruce Wayne <laughs> as an evil Robin. That's interesting. Like, It's a pretty cool concept. Um, I still don't really care for the figure. He comes with two extra hands, a closed fist and a gripping hand. His stand and Dark Father's upper torso. The crown is a soft rubber as well as the feathers on the cape. The cape is kind of firm but pliable. Um, the head articulation isn't all that good because this little crown male around the neck kind of hits this cape and hinders that his leg just fell off <laughs> it's not broken all right good not all right and he's kind of got uh you know the shoulder swivel and hinge i don't see that butterfly cut in there so and then he's got a swivel and a double Nope, that's a single jointed elbow. And a, you know, his ball jointed wrists. No swivel cut at the weight at the weight. Nope. There's nothing at the waist. 
Interesting. Yeah, this whole waist section is um, a soft rubber. I don't think there's anything in here. It's just a blank. Yep. That mirror is over. The articulation on this figure is pretty bad. Um, it It's hidden well, though. Like, I'm not going to complain about that. So, single jointed knees. This really out of the order. That's really out of the ordinary for McFarlane. That being said, the joints are well hidden. Um, they just, except for these ankles. I always hate these ball joints on these ankles. And the the, <laughs> the, the hip articulation is awful because you can't go too far out or else the legs will pop off. This is a bad figure. I think it's a terrible design. Interesting concept though. But it's just, ugh. He does have toe cut. Yeah, I I don't I don't care for this figure at all. He stands wonky, he looks wonky. I have absolutely zero interest in this guy. All right, sucks. Okay, we got emo Superman out of the box. I see a couple things I don't like. Again, another trading card. All right, this is not Bruce Wayne. Thank goodness. <laughs> Real name, Kal-El. Clark Kent, adoptive name. Following the universe-shattering events of Dark Knight's metal, the Earth is enveloped by the dark multiverse and is, and has transformed into a hellish landscape twisted beyond recognition. Now Superman has been separated from Batman, Wonder Woman, and the other DC superheroes, and is being held captive in a solar prison on New Apocalypse. He must fight to survive so that he can reunite with his fellow heroes and save the DC multiverse. Comes with his stand. And he comes with two extra hands. Um, he has a broken finger hand. <laughs> I, I, this is the only thing I can figure that is, is. Oh, someone broke my finger. And he's got this big doomsday hand with the Superman knuckle buster on it. I don't understand the point of that because it is exactly the same as the one on the figure. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Am I missing something? I don't know why he comes with two of the same hand. All right, let's get a look at Emo Superman here. Right off the bat, he's got some markings on the elbow, which I don't like. Some blue paint rub. Uh, from the factory. Um, the face sculpt is kind of meh. He looks kind of slow. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, he's got this bandana on his arm. Which I don't really like. Not because it's just dangling there. But because the paint apps on it are sloppy. They're not painted completely so you see a little bit of flesh rolling over into the red I like the chains on his belt I think those are pretty good and I like these tassels on the the boots these boots are very spawnish another point that's right up McFarlane's alley they're from that era where it's all straps and buckles and everything on their heroes this Superman symbol is kind of sloppy. The paint looks a little bit gunky, that yellow paint in there. But from a distance, I think he looks just fine. As far as articulation is concerned, not a lot of head movement. More so out of side than anything. He has the butterfly rockers, but they feel like uh, they're kind of stuck. So, and then he's got... Oh, maybe that's what it was. They just intended to... Oh, okay. Never mind. It moves with the arm. That's pretty cool. It's a lot of range of motion then. Got elbow swivel and cut, double jointed elbows, and the ball jointed wrists. And that continues over the other side with his little doomsday arm. I guess this is a doomsday arm. It looks like a doomsday arm. The hand wants to pop out. <sighs> He's got the ab and waist crunch, which is okay. It's 
pretty good. Waste, not a lot there. And then he's got the cool hip and then double jointed knees. Everything's the same as everybody else. Got the rocker ankles and the toe articulation. I like this Superman. I don't think he's that bad, especially for eight dollars. Um, the sale is over, by the way. By the time I got these guys in the mail, the sale was over. Alright, Wonder Woman comes with her trading card as well. Looking all electrical. Let's check out her bio. Real name, Diana Prince. Following the universe-shattering events of Dark Knight's Metal, the Earth is enveloped by the Dark Multiverse and has transformed into a hellish landscape twisted beyond recognition. What? I've heard that before. Now, the Batman who laughs rules the planet, and in an attempt to defeat him, Wonder Woman uses her invisible jet and lasso of truth to forge a new weapon, the Chainsaw of Truth, and cut down the evil that stands in her way. Teaming up with Batman, Superman, and the other DC superheroes, Wonder Woman is on a mission to save the DC multiverse. Alright, okay. This is a uh, chainsaw of truth. Um, it's warped in the package, so you, I'm going to have to heat that up and get that straight. I guess this is a lasso wrapped around the hilt. Um, it doesn't look invisible, so maybe just parts... Or a couple parts from the jet. I wouldn't imagine the whole jet fitting into this. Uh, it's interesting. I would have liked something a little bit more Valkyrie-esque. Chainsaws were kind of a big thing in the 80s. So I get the whole metal motif with it. It's just... Uh, I just don't like it. Um, she also comes with Dark Father's cape. And his whittle head. I wish there was a trading card to tell me about him. And she comes with her stand. All right, let's take a look at this beautiful figure. That face sculpt is really good. There's a little bit of glue residue right here on the brow. I don't like that. That's upsetting because I can see it. I'm trying to scrape it off. Um, but the paint on the face is really good. I love that black eyeliner around the eyes. I love the blue highlights in the hair. And that hair is gorgeous wraps around pretty good that being said it's gonna hinder the articulation a lot I love this tiara -ish, um, what would you call this a, I guess it's a crown um, and then she's got these cool like monster skulls for pauldrons and they hinder her arm articulation substantially she can get up about that high though but she also has the oop, her arm just popped out of the socket that's good she's also got these butterfly hinges so there's a little bit more movement there than typical <clears throat> double jointed elbows those hands are big Whoa, that arm you gotta watch out for that that just wants to pop out that upper arm's really soft the bodice is pretty cool. The bodice has a really cool design. It's a soft rubber, so it's kind of squishy in the center. It means there's no torso. There doesn't appear to be any articulation on the inside of it. If there is, it's not going to move very much. And, of course, she's got these really cool thigh cuts on her as well. They're sort of ratcheted. So she's got a lot of good mobility with the legs. The bodice, as I said, is a soft rubber, so it doesn't really hinder the articulation. I feel like there should be an upper thigh cut, but I can't get it to move. And she's got these double jointed knees. These boots are amazing. These thigh high boots are pretty awesome. The very mecha. Like, I don't know how to explain it. I love the gold, though. She, she's actually got a pretty decent range of foot motion, despite the design. That gold paint wants to stick a little bit. These high heels. <laughs> Look at these platform heels on this thing. Uh, yeah. This is a really nice figure. 
I like Wonder Woman a lot. So anytime I can get an excuse to buy a Wonder Woman figure, I'm happy to do that. The ankle is stuck. I don't want to break it. This cape is a soft, pliable rubber, so it, it, it moves pretty good. It's glued to the neck, though, which is a bummer. I hate it when they glue this stuff to the figure, so, you know, it's never going to come off. There's her peg, peg in the middle of the boot. She's pretty cool. She looks great. And now that we've got all four of these guys out, let's take a look at Dark Father here see what we can assemble all right first off let's take a look at this torso this is scary <laughs> this pops off the uh, pelvis piece can pop off and all it is is a peg under here and it makes me wonder if this is like the construction of most of these people if most of the figures are constructed like that um i would be worried about that breaking but it's pretty solid just make sure it's oriented properly before you go snapping the legs on. It's only one way it can go. There are these little slip right here. It should slide into place firmly. So let's go ahead and attach the legs. It's been a long time since I've gotten a build a figure from anything. So I don't collect Marvel Legends, so. The last build a figure I got was a DC Doomsday from a few years ago. I guess those are in there. Snap his arms into the sockets. Ow. Gosh, that is tight. That is tight. Alright, those are tight though. Oh, gosh. And I am a strong guy, and those do not want to pop in. <sighs> Got it. Jeez, that was in there. I'm going to have to worry about those coming out. Ooh, I hurt my hand. Look at that. Look at all the spike prints and stuff. <laughs> All right, and what I don't like is this cape could have easily just sat over the neck like that, but they put these little pegs on it so that it clasps on into place, which, you know, is kind of annoying, but whatever. So you want to put that on, clasp it on the front. And the problem is, is it's not going to want to stay down on that front, so you're going to keep seeing that peg. So you might want to glue or tack that in there. And then, of course, this tiny little head. Yeah. His head is, I think his head is a little bit too small. All right. Yeah, I think his head is a little bit too small for his neck. I want to know more about this. These spikes hurt, by the way. These are not like, say, Batman's fins, which are really soft. These are hard and spiky, and it's hard to <laughs> grab him without it hurting. Oy, and he pinched me. He is, really is a villain. Or maybe he's a hero. What do I know? This is Bruce Wayne with dark side powers. And this isn't the only DC Multiverse figure from this series I have. I have the Devastator Batman, which is a pretty great figure. Unfortunately, it came out before they started doing the Mega Figs. I'm hoping that they'll re-release him in the proper scale. Same time, same type of articulation as the little guys. Double jointed knees. He's actually really well articulated. I do not like the toe articulation though because they use really tiny pegs, really tiny pins. So I feel like if I mess with that, they're just gonna break. It's funny to me that it's, it, to me it just feels like Dark Side dressed as Batman. That's what this feels like. Unfortunately, he does not come with a stand to use 
but he is a very menacing looking character. Of course, he's got dark side skin on his arms and face. The color on his arm should be the same color as his face, but it's not. The arms are a bit glossier. And then he's got this glossy gray outfit and blue belts. I mean, he literally just looks like Batman if Batman were dark side, which I'm okay with. I think he looks great. Very menacing. You could get him in some Batman like poses if you wanted to. That cape will actually help him stand a little bit. Yeah, he looks pretty good. Let's see just how imposing he is over the other guys. Oh. Oh, he's a good, solid inch and a half taller than everybody else. Okay, now this guy is nothing new for me, so let's take a look at this. Trading card, I like that art. Real name, Kalel Clark Kent, adoptive name. When the weaponized alien called Wraith goes on a destructive rampage in the Batcave, and both Batman and Wonder Woman are unable to stop him, Superman dons an armor that features a shield and battle axe to confront the electromagnetic adversary. Their battle continues to the center of the Earth, where Superman is finally able to defeat him, leaving him floating in the lava at the Earth's core. Interesting. Uh, where's his battle axe? Hmm? I want his battle axe. I like this figure a lot, so I'm, I'm happy to get another one of these. This is my second version. He's got a butterfly joints, an elbow, single elbow joint. He's kind of like, he's nothing special, but I just really like the design. Just a very mecha inspired, Ultraman-ish Superman figure. So, you know, pretty star, pretty, pretty standard part of the course you know there's not a lot of uh, range of motion in the feet and stuff you're not going to get a lot of dynamic poses with him because you know his design sort of hinders his articulation I mean that's about as much of the I find it interesting that you have these figures with the double ab and waist crunch and yet they can almost never move forward they can always move back a lot and that's the same issue with him now I think he's nice looking and he's got his little wings to peg into place on the back and other than his wings the only other thing he has is his stand which is necessary for this figure because he he does like to topple over I don't like going on with him. That being said, I think the original version looks way better. The metallic and glossy paint finish on the first release just is much better than this second one. He does have that metallic finish on the S, but that's about it. Um, so, yeah. These are just really nice looking little shelf pieces. I don't think they're anything outstanding. But I really like the design. If they did another version, I'd probably pick it up eventually too. Now this guy's kind of, uh, I already know he's kind of wonky because he's got these tiny little feet. But I love this sculpt. Azrael was kind of a big deal in the early 90s when... Um, Bane broke Batman's back. Azrael took his place as Batman for a little while. And then he went kind of nuts. This sculpt is great. I love the... I love the cape. I love the armor. These should, these should fit right up under these arms right there. I love everything about it. I love these little fins that come off the back of the neck. This silver looks fantastic. 
I would like to see this in a opposite color, like the a metallic red with a silver bat emblem. That would be pretty cool. I don't think they'll do another release of these. These pauldrons are on a ball joint, separate, so they can move and swivel. The head articulation is pretty decent for this guy. Waist articulation is pretty good. The arm articulation is fantastic on him. Those butterfly joints look work amazing. He's only got the single point jointed elbow, but it doesn't. Oh. I just noticed something. That's uh. Oh my god. <laughs> He's missing his thumb. It, I don't know if it fell out when I was taking him out of the package. I don't see a thumb anywhere. Ah, oh, that's lame. Oh my gosh. And what do you do? You take him back to Walmart? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. He's missing his thumb. Uh, maybe I'll return him to the store. I don't know. If I don't find that thumb, I don't see it anywhere. But his surprisingly got really good articulation, barring the missing thumb. Where is his thumb? Oh, I gotta look. I gotta look. I gotta look. He's missing his thumb. How's he gonna hold his sword? Ah, oh, that sucks. Anyway, it comes with a sword. It comes with a stand. Stand's necessary because of them tiny, tiny little feet. Nice little card. He has his thumb there. Real name, Jean-Paul Valley. War veteran, Knight of the Order of St. Dumas, and now the Joker's key recruit in the crusade against Batman. Azrael is the Dark Knight's most powerful new threat and the one living link to a devastating secret about the Wayne family's legacy in Gotham City. In an effort to overthrow Batman, Azrael dons an armored bat suit of his own and threatens to take control of the city. That's interesting because, you know, when he first came out, he was not a villain. Here's his first release. Black version. I feel like the head's a little bit different. Why? Are, maybe his, his ears are pointy, aren't as pointy. The black version looks pretty good. Um, they go together pretty good. I like the gold at least opposes to the silver. Okay. Let's see, he comes with his trading card looking all ominous. Oh, he's got a bio. Real name, Duke Thomas. After traveling the different realities of the dark multiverse, Duke Thomas returned to his Earth to find the cosmic destroyer, Barbatos, now in his final form as a dragon, along with his other dragons of the Bat. With the help of some allies, Duke defeats Barbatos and his forces, but the darkness still consumes this universe. Despite the ultimate loss, Duke does not stop his mission. Creating a bat suit of armor from the hide of the defeated dragon, Duke takes the powerful parallax and ventures into the dark multiverse alone to hunt any remaining monsters. That's pretty cool. So I just assumed this was like Thomas Wayne, <laughs> Bruce's dad, and from another universe. But what do I know? This design is really good. Like articulation from a distance is so well hidden with the sculpt and design. It looks looks phenomenal. I love this cape. Look at this. Look at this. What just happened? His arm just fell <laughs> out of the socket for no reason. Okay. Oh, and then Azriel took a dive. Alright. This cape looks great. Look at this little like like finny piece on the back. I didn't even know that was there. I love how tall his ears are on this armor. I love the bone look of the armor, the face armor. Like, why is this arms keep falling off? I'm not even touching it. Um, yeah, the armor looks fantastic. It's just scaled and sculpted. The boots look great. And they're even sculpted on the bottom. Yeah, this is a good looking figure. 
This is a very thick cake too, and surprisingly is still very malleable. Let's see, head articulation is pretty good. He's got some waist articulation. The upper torso is a softer rubber, so it's sort of just like, I guess the upper body. I don't know. It's weird. Some sometimes the uh, it's just weird how they design stuff. Of course, he's got the butterfly joints on his arms. And his arms can go about that high. Double jointed elbows. Um, they've done an improvement on the wrist articulation. Instead of that ugly ball, they actually sculpted a wrist that pretty much does the same thing. It just spins and twists. And it looks a lot better. This arm wants to pop out of the socket, but it still keeps going up. I don't know why it wants to pop out. Double joints here. Nice, nice little soft fins on the side. And again, the same type of uh, wrist design. I like that new wrist. I do not like <laughs> that this arm, I don't know why it's doing that. I guess it's just like oblonged. I bet if I boiled it or something, it would stop doing that. And then he's got his uh, leg articulation. Double jointed. I love the stitching down the side of the thigh. Wow. Yeah, I saw this guy in the store and I really wanted to get him. They sort of muted the ball feature on the ankles. They flattened it out. That looks a lot better than the rounded ball joints that they've been using. And he's got the toe articulation. Pretty sturdy. Pretty sturdy feel and construction on this guy. Ugh. Of course, it comes with this cool battle axe guitar, which, you know, Batman needs somebody to rock out with. But he doesn't have any playing fingers. He's just got a fist, no extra hands. So, if he wanted to play, let's see if he can even. Yeah. Well, his arm pops off, so that's not a problem. That arm will not stay in. So he could actually play a lot better than the uh, Batman figure. Oh man, those knees are kind of tight. So Duke Thomas and Batman can like rock out together. That's pretty cool. I like him. If I was going to pick the two best figures out of this purchase are definitely the two rocking Batman and Duke Thomas here. Followed by Dark Father here. I think he's pretty good. Um, the rest are hit and miss with me. I really do like the Wonder Woman, but the accessory is kind of weak. <laughs> this has been a massive unboxing and review of DC Multiverse from McFarlane Toys. I am UR Supreme Toys. Thank you so much for watching.